G'day. Now here we are at the secret testing grounds. Well, it's actually the horse paddock where we adjust our two horses. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some water on a hexi stove and on the Crusader Mark I stove that I just uh, obtained. And we're going to time it. We're going to see how long it takes to boil. We're not going to go for half a litre of water. We're just going to do uh, 250 mil which is a bit over a US cup uh, and see how we go because that's now I'm going to make a cup of coffee I have the coffee here and uh, well also we're going to try a impromptu homemade lid and see if that makes any difference in in boil time there's uh, some sort of conjecture about whether it does or it doesn't uh, I know when I tested it on my desk in the office, then uh, it definitely did make a difference. Um, today I'm out here, there is a light breeze, uh, I don't have a windbreak, that is going to make it uh, take longer I'm sure, but whether the cover makes any difference or not, that's, that's the issue. And of course as I speak the wind starts to pick up, but that's the way it goes. Let's get set up and I'll bring you back in a moment. Okay, over here we have a hexi stove or hexamine stove and I'll have it on the half open like that, Let's see if that makes any difference, a bit more protected with the wind and we can put the cup on like so, it's not that stable, no, there we have it, up like this, this one falls apart and it falls in. We can have it going that way. We we'll just put it on like there. The tablet underneath. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Here's a hexi tab. And what we're going to do is we'll, we'll scrape a little bit of the, the wax off there before we light it and put it on. Sometimes we, we used to break them in half, but our tabs in the 70s and 80s in the Australian Army were, were round. And the wax coating was pretty much bulletproof, let alone waterproof, you really had to scrape them off. This is a Crusader Mark I, and what I'm doing here, I could put a hexi tab in there, but I'm going to go with stove rope and meth, and see how that goes. Although I suppose the first comparison really should be hexi on hexi, and then we'll uh, let the cups cool down, Put more water and see how we go. So yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll do hexi on hexi. Another hexi tab. Put that in there. Now these days, a modern Australian water bottle comes with a pouch here where you can put a pack of uh, hexi tabs in there. Like that. We never had them. Also, the cups, they come with a little stove stand. It's a bit awkward to use, um, but uh, I'm, I'm not using it in this instance. And I probably won't be carrying mine and using it. Uh, just use a hexi stove, a couple of rocks, whatever goes. <laughs> this is my uh, BPS knives, um, sheath knife I bought come from Ukraine for like 50 bucks brilliant sharp well made comes with a ferro rod so we'll see if we can get these things started with that if not doesn't matter we have a box of matches um, actually it might be better off just to use the matches I suppose we'll keep the fancy ferro rods for another time Do have a spoon and uh, also got a fire extinguisher handy just in case we need it. Hoping that's that's not going to be the case. Right. Let's uh, use this just to scrape a little bit of the wax coating off. There we go. That'll make it easy to light. Santa summer for this one. There you go. 
just make it a bit easier on the corner. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them in half. So I like them like that in bits. Easier to light. Crusader cup has measuring marks on it, and so we're going to filter the first one, which is 250 mil. I don't know if you can actually see that, but try to take my word for it. I'm going to be pouring into here. Okay, and then 250 mil. coming from that direction. So I've turned the hexi away from it and I'll turn this away from it so we don't have additional issues. And I've got a timer here ready to go so I'll try to be as even as possible with the two, lighting them. they're up. They're running. Yes. And yes. Uh, well, this should be interesting. Yeah, I should knock it out of it. That one and start. Hopefully that comes up and you can see everything. We might move this one back and the camera front. Hopefully. Now, admittedly, 250 mils isn't much of a drink. I'd probably do a bit more than that, but it gives us an idea. It saves me having to go load up more water, I suppose. Oh, I love the smell of Hexi in the morning, or afternoon as the case may be. Not something you really want to be doing in an enclosed space like a tent or... Uh, I mean, look at the flame coming off that. I don't know what it's going to do with my Trekology uh, table, but we'll see. And that's with the flame being up so high. It hasn't fallen through. It's definitely given off a lot of flame. It'll heat that up. That should be interesting for picking up, which is why you have the bush hat. Use that to pick up the uh, hot handles. Um, this one, less blowing around because the Crusade is more protected. Now, the guy I was watching who said that the lid doesn't make any difference, it's all about the, uh, uh, the thickness of the cup and temperature and wind and other things, that was the guy, uh, Beck's uh, bug out survivor. And I think he might be right, but he's, uh, he's definitely right that I'm sure that the thickness of the, uh, the cup will make a difference. I know after this boiled with the, the lid on, the water stayed hot for a considerable amount of time with the lid left on, which was good. So that means that this thing, yes, it gets hot and it retains the heat. Now titanium heats up very quickly, but it also cools very quickly. 
and no doubt I'll probably do this experiment with my titanium pot. Um, unless I get bored with the whole thing, but yeah, we'll probably do it. But look at that, the flame heating that up. Now I'm thinking, do I now turn the cup around so I don't have that issue later on? And I think I might, because we're 1 minute 15 into it. This should be exciting. Successfully picked up. Ow, oh, that's hot. Turned around. Whoops, a daisy. Went through there. Oh, that was alright. It's pretty precarious though, isn't it? Doesn't look very stable at all. Basically, it's the fault of that old hexi stove. It's, it's uh, I think a cheap civvy copy and it's had a, a fair bit of use. But that, that's better than letting that handle get too hot. Of course, now it's getting hot from the flames coming up from this side. So I can't really win. Nothing like a well thought out demonstration, is there? And there we go. All good fun. Two minutes twenty. It's that we got bubbles on the bottom. That's bubbling a bit more than this one. Coming up to three minutes. Hopefully that is in focus. It's about as exciting as watching water boil. Now, I think, yeah, that's just falling through. And I think that one's gone out, been blown out. Got down to tiny pieces and was blown out. Which is a problem with these stoves, I suppose. So that's as far as that's going. That's like 315. That died. This is still going, it hasn't boiled yet. It's bubbling. It'll probably be hot enough for coffee, but uh, it's not boiled. Which is what we're all about. So that went out, that was a lot of use. One hexi tab in an exposed position. Now meanwhile, this is starting to boil. And we're at four minutes fifteen seconds. I'll just bring the camera in over the top so you can have a look. Hopefully that's uh, where are we? There. So I'd call that a boil at about four minutes twenty. Yeah, four and a half minutes. What do you reckon? Good enough? So. Let's see how long the thing burns for. So the Crusader is um there you go, a war wound. Nice little burn mark. Looks like my toast. Anyway, um, but luckily it's at the back. So, that's bubbling away nicely now. I wonder how, how hot this is. Uh, it's still hot. You can probably pick it up. Pick it up. I put a bit more water in. It bubbled, and now we're just checking time. That should uh, boil nicely, and I can have my coffee now. See this thing? This is a caramel latte. Okay. I don't 
use this brand much anymore. I use the Nescafe and I use the 98% sugar free because uh, well, in the last couple of months I've lost 10 kilos and I cut sugar out as much as possible almost entirely. And the good thing about using these, you don't have to carry milk or worry about milk. Uh, you don't have to worry about carrying sugar. And switching from tea, which I love, I love a good cup of tea, standard NATO, white with two, to these things, uh, it saves the logistics. When you go camping or just for a day hike or whatever you're doing, this is really, really good. And you just put it in and away you go. Now, I'm not going to drink out of that. I'm actually going to give this, put this over the top. I'm going to give this British Army cup, this plastic cup, a go. I remember years ago in Soldier magazine seeing British soldiers drinking out of these and I thought well that's not going to be much good how are you going to put that on the, the fire and back then they didn't have the Crusader cups they had the two Dixies and they put a Dixie on the fire and then put the the, the, the bigger one on top of the, the small one to cover it and so on and the British Dixies are a lot deeper than the Australian ones in fact the Australian ones are about that deep and the British ones are about that deep so uh, I remember my dad seeing the Australian ones and um, he uh, commented on this and that they were a bit bit wonky. That was when we actually uh, signed some stuff out of the, the store at Victoria Barracks and he took me camping for the first time. you got to remember that at that stage dad was in the Australian uh, Band Corps, Australian Army Band Corps, um, and he'd done his British Army service in the, the King's Dragoon Guards and been in the Royal Air Force, the Royal Air Force Regiment. And, with a band. Um, it's seen active service in, in Malaya, 1956 to 59. Uh, you know, but yeah, he commented that that was the case, you know, that they have the, uh, the the Dixies for cooking up the water, but they didn't have these black cups. They had a little green plastic mug uh, back in the 50s and early 60s. Okay, let's see how we're going here. It's still boiling, and yeah, it's gone out. This thing's gone out again. How do I do this? Uh, well, it stopped at 4.20. So let's just resume. So I have no idea now how long this has been stopped for and how long that thing's burning. But I'd say easily seven minutes, maybe eight minutes. More than enough time. I'll just stop it. Just lift this up. Uh, that's this lid. Oh, yeah, that's bubbling away. Look at that. It's gorgeous. So this Crusader uh, stove is very effective. Very effective indeed. I'm very impressed with it. Beats the heck out of the Hexi stove. Uh, at least that one that doesn't really hold together very well. And uh, let's have a brew. Time being, we'll put it in the bin. Okay. Now, take this off. Give it a pressure test. No, no heat coming through. These handles are better, but it hasn't got the heat coming over it. Um, pour it in. Thing's still going away strong. I'm very impressed with one hexi tap in a Crusader stove. I really am. The first time I've used it uh, this way. I did use it with the stove rope and metho, and that was all right. But the hexi tab, very good. You could easily boil your water and then uh, use it to cook on. And the good thing about using a, a hexi tab, if you need to continue cooking, you can easily throw a a tablet in there. If you're using meth, you can't just pour more meths on it or alcohol, whatever you want to call it. The thing will flare up. Even if you think it's out and you do that, it can flare up. I've seen that happen with a trans. Okay, I've done it with a transier. Um, and yeah, there was like. And then of course you knock the transier and then there's liquid metho burning everywhere. And everything goes pear shaped very quickly. Uh, so that can. That's, we've got the fire extinguisher. 
experience is basically just cocking up and getting away with it. Um, okay, time to stir. Just get my spoon. And this one is from, uh, I, I don't know, Red Rooster or KFC? Red Rooster, I think. Yeah, pretty good, whatever. From one of those. Um, and they can be a good place to source a lot of your uh, cutlery needs. And your little wet wipes and tissues and things. Uh, now, the good thing about having a separate plastic cup for drinking is that leaves your steel cup ready to be used to cook something else up. So you can make a brew and then you can dirty it up with stew or what have you. Don't do it the other way around, otherwise you've got to clean the thing in between usage. Uh, a lot of people use those boil in the bags or those ration pack things. They're, you can heat them up with the water, pull them out, and then have the brew while you're eating from the, the what's the name? Other ones where you pour the hot water into the bag, you can do that and while it sets for four or five minutes, you then put more water in and make a brew. So, and then you can pour into this to, to, to drink from. So that, that, it's, it's a handy idea. I mean, uh, with our cups canteen, obviously we always used to carry two. Um, and some guys used to carry two and no Dixies. I always carried two plus the Dixies simply because half the time they'd be going, all right, it's, we've got a hot box meal coming up. So they bring the hot boxes up and they'd serve it out. And if you get it in your two mugs, because you've got the mash and the peas and the stew and the rest, what are you going to have a drink from? And maybe they've got a dessert. So you've got, you know, your mash and peas and your peas and your dessert. And so, having a separate cup is a good thing. Anyway, cheers. Oh, that's another thing. With these metal cups, these ones, we used to put a bit of electrical tape on the lip. So when you went to drink, you didn't burn your lips off. Um, and that, that, that did happen, I've seen a few times. But you, you put a bit of electrical tape there, and away you went. Anyway. These you don't need that. A little bit weak, but that's because it's like half a litre of water in there in one tap. You probably put two of those things in. But that'll do. As I said, I'm out here filling in time while my girls go and play with their horses and do what they gotta do. This thing is still burning and still giving off enough heat. Definitely for simmering and maybe even you know, cooking something. Now, the reason I wanted to try the uh, stove rope and meth is because with the transier, I can get a little transier in there, and you can just get the the bar, the crossbar down. If um, yeah, if you do, you can do that. But then there's no gap between the top of the transier and the cups, the, the bottom of the, the cup. So it, it's not very effective. You need to have a, 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 a bit of a gap. Usually about oh, 15 millimeters, maybe a bit more. Say three quarters of an inch at the most. Anyway, this way with the, the, the ro stove rope and the, the thing you have, the metho, and therefore you also have the gap, it works well. And if I was to put this underneath my grill, my little grill table, so I can do a steak on it, that would be good. I wouldn't want it. Uh, not with the holes where the, the flames can come through. I wouldn't want to grill a steak on hexamine. And I'm not even 100% sure I'd want to grill a steak underneath a, 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 you know, a solid top, a grill plate. So, yeah, it's, it's good to have the, the versatility of, of the two fuel methods. The other thing is the hexatabs are relatively cheap. I can buy eight for about six bucks. Uh, there are places where they charge a hell of a lot more. <laughs> Methylated spirits is very, very cheap. The stove rope cost me, I think, uh, $12 for the nine mil. It would have been $10 for the six mil, but I got the nine mil. I got two meters of it and I've used about that much. So, you yeah, know, that's always a good thing. It's, it's come out and it's burnt out. It's, it's not really of any use. <laughs> Might as well blow it out. There we go, send them all over the place. Uh, there is some residue there from the hexi, yep, fair enough, but 
that's easy enough smacked away, cleaned away. Um, all in all, I'm very, very impressed with the Crusader Cup stove. And um, yeah, looking forward to using it out in the field. I think four, four and a half minutes for the boil time. If I'd had a full 500 mil in there, five, six minutes. And it, it would have, that's all it would have taken. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. And we will try that next. Um, so then we'll compare, uh, like with the, the indoor metho I got the other day, six, six and a half minutes with the lid on. Um, so that was interesting for the metho. So we'll, we'll try that.